Today's hearing marks the official resumption of the House Financial Services Committee efforts to enact payment stablecoin legislation. Last Congress, Democrats and Republicans worked together on a proposal to bring about payment stablecoin issuers under a regulatory framework in the United States and allow stablecoins to unlock their potential as a contributor to a modern payment system. That proposal from September was noticed for today's hearing. Last year, members from both sides of the aisle reviewed the proposal, provided feedback, and worked to reach a compromise. But the clock ran out on those efforts due to the fall elections. That bill is an infant. It's a baby. It's not necessarily a beautiful baby, but it's, it's our baby, and it's named Maxine McHenry. And so it's here today for both sides of the aisle to review and consider and to hear from our panelists. So today we're going to discuss it, think about revisions. How do we address the benefits and risks described in the Biden administration's 2021 report on stablecoins? The Financial Stability Oversight Council recommended that Congress pass a legal framework. And Chairman McHenry and I are committed to working across the aisle to pass payment stablecoin legislation. And we're hopeful that members in this room on both sides of the aisle will build on the foundation of that work. Luckily, we've made significant headway with the proposal that we've noticed. By requiring payment stablecoins to be backed one for one by high quality liquid assets held in reserve, the proposal mitigates run risk. The legislation also requires stablecoin issuers to comply with redemption requirements, monthly attestation and disclosures, and risk management standards. These are just a few ways that this legislation established strong, much needed consumer protections in this area, just as Ms. Reynolds' hands outlines in her testimony today. However, there's more work to be done. It's my goal that our payment stablecoin legislation will provide different ways for issuers to maintain and come into compliance. I believe innovation is fostered through choice and competition. And one way to do that is through multiple pathways to become a stablecoin issuer, though with appropriate protections so we prevent regulatory arbitrage or a race to the bottom. I'm glad to have Superintendent Harris here from the New York Department of Financial Services to explain the framework that's currently in place in New York and discuss their requirements for payment stablecoin issuers. Finally, I want to reiterate the urgency for those of us in this room to work together and pass this needed legislation. Recent reports indicate that the digital asset developers are leaving the United States to go to countries that have more established regulatory frameworks for digital assets. That's not good for innovation, jobs, or consumer or investor protection here. The ongoing turf war between the SEC and the CFTC over digital assets is also just unhelpful, but it's also unsustainable. When you have two agencies contradicting each other about whether one of the most utilized stable coins in the market is either a security or a commodity, you end up with uncertainty. Federal regulators have made it abundantly clear that without an act of Congress, they will continue to interpret their authorities broadly even when in direct contradiction with each other. That's why it's time for Congress to act and pass legislation to establish a regulatory framework for payment stablecoins. We look forward to hearing from our witnesses, and I look forward to picking up where we left off last fall.